Hamidash and George gasped when they saw Parent go on the floor, and it seriously looked like she was finished. Hamidash went over to Parent and checked her pulse and asked, Parent Parenko, you okay? Parenko grunted and said her last words. I feel really dizzy. And she passed out. No. No, 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 no. Parenko, come on. Please, wake up. Please, wake up. He said didn't worry, but Parenko wouldn't answer. Hector became mad and started to steal Rainbow's magic, giving her the same affections as Parenko had. But even worse. She fell on her side, putting a huff to her head as she fell next to Parenko. And before Hector could do anything, Parenko got mad, went over, and tried to hit Hector in the stomach, chest, heck, even in the pry part, but it just didn't work out. And with his magic, Hector threw Parenko all the way till she hit her head on the garbage bin. But it was like her sweater was like a blanket for her. From this morning, she had put on the sweater. Parenko's heart was like a turtle's, and her mind was dizzy, as if she had a she had entered a fake snowy tornado. George started to get worried until he spotted a pharmacy to his left, so. So he got the first aid from the little table. But when he got back, however, Parenko was not there. George started to get worried again. But then he remembered something. Parenko had told him that when she crashes hard, she teleports. And she teleports to a random place, which is how she got to New York in the first place. Not just because she got hit with a baseball far, far away. And of course she had told him that in the elevator. Parenko woke up in the forest and when Hector noticed she was gone, he teleported to the same forest. And of course, figuring out where she was, where she was with his own magic. Parenko looked around and noticed that she was by herself in the forest and said oh ow 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 my head and she laid on the grass but she didn't pass out and then she started to walk after a while Parenko said ugh I'm so bored help me Oh wait, I'm a peacemaker for God's sake. 
I mean, I know it's already night time, but I'm still not out of, and I'm still not out of this stinking forest, but it's okay. I can do this. And Parenkel started to sing Disney songs. For the first time in forever, I've been stuck in this forest. <sighs> Akuna Matata means no worries for the rest of your days. It's our problem free. Philosophy Akuna Matata What is fire and why does it what's the word burn when's it my turn when I love love to explore the shore above That's actually an excellent question. Oh well, back to the story. Let it go. Let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. <laughs> and Hector hurt her with his magic. And Parango fell on the floor. Hector growled in anger. <sighs> Do me a huge favor. And just stop singing. You're so annoying. Hector yelled. Parenkel said, Ow, my wing. And then she asked, Wait, how did you know I was singing? Hector laughed. <laughs> I've been following you, of course. For a moment, Parenkel got scared into silence and then asked, w Why? Hector went over to Parenkel's ear and whispered evilly, I will kill you. Parenkel felt like she was going to faint. So she ran as fast as she can all the way to the exit of the forest. Hector teleported in front of her, lifted up her chin and said, Unless you give me your necklace. But if you don't give it up, you or... That blue pegasus will be gone. And he did his evil laugh. <laughs> Hector's sidekick, Jose, tapped on Parenkel's shoulder and whispered, Kid, run. Parenkel was now dazed and confused. But Jose already knew what to do, and he whispered, Listen, I want to help. I'm not lying, okay? I'm only going to fake some of it, and when I wink to you, it's fake, okay? And Parenkel nodded in agreement, and Jose helped Parenkel up to her feet. Hector saw what Jose was doing and asked angrily, Jose, what are you doing? Jose looked at Hector with confidence while Parenkel hid behind him. Before answering Hector, he turned to Parenkel and whispered, One, 
and Perinkle turned to run, but then Jose faked being mean and tripped Perinkle. He held her down and winked. Perinkle gave him a small smile, trying not to show the expression of pain on her face. I stood her up so I can trip her. She's so stupid, she actually thought I was going to help her, Jose said, and he pretended to do an evil laugh. <laughs> Parenko chuckled softly. <laughs> Hector tilted his head to the side and said, you better stay down, freak show. When Jose wasn't looking, Hector hurt Perinkle with his evil magic. Perinkle started to cough and tried to ask, What are you doing? Jose went over to Perinkle and tried to help her, but then Perinkle passed out. Perinkle woke up in one minute, and she had ran away as fast as she can without Jose. Uh, or Hector looking but when she returned to George Hector had teleported back to Perinkle and Perinkle had little energy since Hector stole all her magic anybody else went over to try to help Perinkle so she doesn't pass out again. Perinkle looked at Rainbow Dash with a weak expression and said, Rainbow, I can't defeat him on my own. I need your help. Rainbow said, don't worry, kid. I'll help you. And Rainbow got hovered by Hector. And Hector tried to kill Rainbow Dash. Perinko tried to stand and tried convincing Hector to not hurt her. You're not my mom, Hector yelled. Put her down, Perinkle said angrily. And she stared into Hector's eyes without blinking. Hector tried two techniques. One, snapping fingers. Two, waving a hand in front of eyes but it didn't work and Hector sadly said no as he magically got defeated Rainbow saved herself from falling by flying down safely Perinkle started to breathe quickly Perinkle's vision became blurry. Ingrash asked, Uh, Perinkle, are you okay? Perinkle said, Yes. And she passed out. Ingrash called Cleo over and asked, 
Is she okay? What's wrong with her? Cleo checked Parenkel's forehead and said, She's fine. She just has a fever. Ramadash thought for a minute and then said, I want to take her. George said, You need supervision, R.D. Lingua said it angrily. I'm a grown mare, which counts of me being an adult. The sort of British man's name is Jerry. Jerry suggested to go with Rainbow Dash to help Parenkel. Rainbow Dash said, Fine. And they took Parenkel to the hospital. Parenkel woke up a little dizzy, but she was all right. A little dazed, sorry. She looked around, but only saw the doctor working on the machines. Hello? Parenkel asked. The doctor turned around and saw Parenkel sitting up. Oh, you're okay. Good to hear. I just have to keep you here for a little more, and then you can go home. And then he asked, does anything hurt? Parenko laid down and said, I feel tired. Dr. Kevin said, and that is completely normal. Parenko closed her eyes for a little minute, and Dr. Kev took off the pulse meter, and Parenko went home with Rainbow Dash, and Jerry went to his house. A few weeks later, Rainbow and Parenko came home from doing a race, and George said, Hey guys, I have a surprise for you two. Rainbow asked, Where is it? And George said, It's on the table. Parenko and Rainbow Dash looked at the paper on the table, and it said, Adoption. Father. George. Mother. Unknown. Signed George Her George Hernandez. Congratulations. Thanks for adopting Parenko's known Rainbow Dash. R. D. and Parent were surprised. And they all watched the Home Alone movie. The end. Or is it? Applejack woke up near a bush and asked, Where, where am I? When she saw, I mean, when she went to walk, her right leg got stuck on a thorn. She tried to pull it out, and when she pulled it hard, the thorn cut her leg like a sharp stick or a needle. AJ cried in pain and said, Ow! <laughs> she had a really bad headache, and she passed out from the crying and the headache. Okay, for real this time. The end. To be continued. Bye.